back, everybody, to another episode of The Turtle and the Tiger. I thought today we'd do sort of a tech talk video on the Oztent Fox Wing awning system that I have on the Turtleback trailer. So it should be pretty interesting. Stick around. Okay, so one of the... Uh, if you followed my blog at all, you'd probably know that when we were in Alamogordo, New Mexico, we ran into a little bit of a problem with some winds. That being that the awning was all set up and we, sometime during the early evening while we were in the other rig, uh, the winds went from light to variable all the way up to about 40 knot gusts. And where the rig was positioned and the awning was all set up, the wind was basically coming in it, into it broadside. And what happened was when, within the time frame of about 45 seconds to a minute and a half, the wind got up underneath it, ripped all of the, all of the uh, anchor stakes out and all the tie downs, and the whole awning folded up pretty much like a cheap suit. So, all right, well, we put it all together, kind of got it tied up best we could because it was getting dark. The next morning we went out to assess it. So this video is going to be about, well, we already talked about what went wrong. Uh, we're going to talk about, in two other sections, basically how I had to go and order parts for it and how that all went out. And then the subsequent repair to the awning and maybe lessons learned at the end. So let's start off first of all with an assessment in the parts ordering process that I went through for the yawning. Okay, so the assessment. What, what, what went wrong? What, what did we find that was damaged? Well, let's start with the spar poles themselves. Uh, the Fox Wing awning has four what they call spar poles, but basically poles that hold up the canvas. Two of the poles were bent. Uh, one for sure was bent beyond usability. Uh, the other one was borderline. We'll talk about that in a minute. The spar pole inserts or hinge inserts uh, that are these, these plastic inserts here, and I'll try to put a insert here to give you a better detail of them. All four of them were broke. So they basically, to me, they seem like they're the weak link, like they're sort of your shear pin, if you will. So if something goes wrong here, instead of this getting all kajazzled, uh, the, the break, the weak link is supposed to be here at the, at the point of connection, instead of taking it out on the yeah, hinge, move, it, the hinge move the camera a little bit. So this is your, this, this unit here, this all these aluminum ribs is just one uh, big hinge, aluminum hinge. It basically slides into the back here, and we'll show you some of that. And we can, I'll show you. This. So, what to do? We were in Alamogordo, New Mexico. We were on the road full time. I've got a place, I don't really have a place where I can get things mailed to, so I went online to see if there were distribution points somewhere in our area to where I could just go in and, like a brick and mortar, and go and buy the parts. Well, that didn't work so well. Uh, so, we're gonna talk now about the whole parts process and how that that came to be. Now you gotta okay, now if I have if I have a illustrated parts breakdown uh, that I get offline, I think I took a screenshot of it. And I took a screenshot of it primarily because I had to converse with Oztent in order to get the right parts. So knowing that there wasn't a distribution point in the United States where I could just drive in and buy parts 
uh, at least any that I could find, and I wasn't given really any direction to do so. Everything had to be ordered online. Excuse me. So I go online. I find the parts breakdown. <coughs> unlike a lot of things so you couldn't click on the part you had to sort of take that and go to another place and order the actual parts so what i needed was i needed an entire spar hinge two poles four connectors and all the hardware which basically was the two rivets to put the spar hinge on and then two rivets for each of the poles here okay because the canvas once you replace the pole there's two rivets that hold the canvas on the end of the pole. All right, so in the, or, in the process of clicking on these things, uh, the spar hinge was okay, the poles were okay, the poles show, didn't really show that there were uh, ends to where the poles, you know, hook into them where the flat spot is, or I should say this end. So I ordered those, and then I ordered the, you know, the, the actual spar hinge uh, points themselves. And so at the end, when you're trying to put all these things into your shopping cart, no rivets were available or out of production. Uh, it was just pretty confusing. So I ordered what I thought I would have more than enough of so that when it got delivered if anything I had spare parts I was okay with it I just wanted to get it fixed and get back on the road so one of my concerns was though we needed to wait until we got to Durango Colorado which was like in four weeks from the time five weeks from the time that we were we were in New Mexico I wanted to de delay that delivery in order for me to not, because it was the only place I was going to be able to have something delivered. Homeowner was cool with it. So I emailed like right off the bat to Ozten and I said, you know, how long is it going to take for these parts to get delivered? Because I want to time it. They said five to six days. I said, cool. So five to six days before we got on Durango, I went online and ordered everything, right? homeowner came back to me about a week later and she says hey some parts are here for you when you get here great got there opened the box and half the stuff was there and half the stuff was missing and ironically they had sent me an email during the the process and said you know what you got these parts you got these parts you don't really need these parts so they kind of made that decision for me like without you know really conferring with me back and forth they just sent me an email saying they they did it <clears throat> so what i end, what ended up happening is you get you get some you get the poles and some of the poles the, the brand new poles came with the inserts already installed which wasn't how the nomenclature on the website had them they didn't send me the spar hinge at all they didn't send me any rivets I did put in the remarks column uh, and an email to them. I said, well, listen, if you don't have any of the rivets, that's cool. Just tell me what the material of the rivets are and the prescribed, you know, size, and I'll take care of it on the road. No, no information of that was passed on. So here I am in Durango, Colorado, right? And I got some parts. I got basically a couple of poles. I got some inserts. I don't have any rivets for, for to, to attach to the canvas, and I don't do, didn't have any rivets for the spar hinge. But who cares? I don't have the spar hinge yet. So then, who do you talk to? So you have a you have a contact number on their website. You know, you click on that you're in the United States, and that's supposed to direct you to somebody in the United States because I guess this place is out of Australia. Well, come to find out, guess who calls me? somebody from Australia. I'm like, well, don't you have anybody? In the yeah, but we, we're going to take care of this, you know, and, and, and not let them do it. So it was really kind of weird. Don't forget, Australia is way on the other side of the globe, so the time difference is crazy. So whether they're responding to you by voice or email, you know, it's like eight, what, 12 hours difference? I don't know, something crazy. So there was some communication issues. The biggest communication issue, though, that I want to point out to you, which is probably the whole premise of this thing, is that Oztent in Australia shows a, par a certain part number on a part, where in the United States, when you look at it on the website, it's a different part number. So when you're going back and forth, 
it's like, okay, so you're saying that LL565 is the same as L14430, and, you know, so didn't didn't have a real good experience that way. Sum it up on the part side of it. We were at the house for three weeks. We didn't have all of our parts until the very last day of the house set. So I had to scramble. And even then, I, I didn't have enough time. All I had enough time to do was to get the spar hinge in. And we'll leave, now that'll segue into what we had to do to fix it. Okay. So stay First tuned. First of all, let's talk about the spar hinge assembly itself. I'm gonna bring you around the back of it here so you can kind of see the spar hinge better. All right, so this is the spar hinge itself. It's a one piece aluminum, looks like aluminum cast, and it basically slides into this rail right here, okay? Now the problem is when you get the spar hinge in the mail, it's got, it's got drill points. I'll bring it back over here again if I can show it to you. Hopefully you can see it. There's two rivets that attach the spar hinge to the rail system. And I don't think you can see it, but there's they're basically in there and in there. Now, when you get the spar hinge, it doesn't come with all the holes. It comes with the two front holes, but the little tang or tongue that sticks into the, the rail system and slides in, you're gonna have to drill two holes in order for the rivets to go far enough through to catch and hold this in place. Okay, so that's one thing. All right, the second thing I want to tell you about this is when you get a, if you get a new spar hinge, make sure you have all, everything you need and everything is oriented correctly and all your holes drilled and all of that stuff before you even think about putting this in. Mine went in only with a little help of a rubber hammer. In other words, you just can't pick it up, slide it in, then rivet your two rivets and you're done. No, no, it doesn't go in that easy. I cleaned the channels out and everything and it still took a rubber mallet to get it in. And the reason I'm telling you you need to get everything prepared is because the old one, the way it came out is after I drilled out the rivets, it was so hard to come out because it's so tight in there, it came out in three or four pieces because there's no real way to whack on it without breaking it, unless you take, you know, I didn't have a giant block of wood or anything like that. So I was tapping, 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 but it's pretty fragile. It's a lot more fragile, I think, than, than most people realize. So when you're replacing that, be careful. All right, the way this goes together is, there's a bolt that comes all the way through here with a nut on the bottom. There's a small metal flat washer on each end, but that bolt goes through two bushings, one that's inserted from the top and one that's inserted from the bottom. So there's two basic halves here. So when you're putting this all back together again, that's something to think about ahead of time. All right, let's talk about these inserts. There were four that I had to replace. Uh, two of these poles, don't forget, were good and two were bad. And I'm gonna show you here the inside of one of the poles, what it looks like. So here's the cross section of the pole and whether or not, I don't know if you can see it or not, but those two pieces of black plastic inside there are what was left of the spar hinge uh, point itself after it broke off. So don't, if you're gonna go replacing these and putting, and putting new ones in, don't think you're gonna pull these things out. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is just to simply put the new hinge uh, point up to it and, and bang it in with a hammer and then you push these basically forward into the channel. Now you notice a little cross piece there, right? Okay, that's not just for this section, that, goes, that runs the entire length of the tube to give it strength. So it's something to note if you think you're gonna bend these back. Okay, so now you've got your, your spar, uh, you've got your new spar connectors, your hinge connectors, whatever you wanna call them these black plastic things. When you put them into your new pole, a couple of things to, to make sure. First of all, there's a screw, a set screw that holds these things in. So make sure that there's a hole in the, in the connector itself and a hole in here, make sure those are fairly lined up. 
they go in pretty easy. You take a rubber hammer to them and tap them in. It pushes the old pieces forward without any problem. And then as you're, as you're working it in, you can kind of tap it a little and they, they do line up pretty good. All right. Okay, basically there are two poles that are one way uh, and configured on the canvas and two another way. The center two poles, all right, simply just have the canvas. I don't know if you can show it. I can show it here, but they're riveted on the bottom, okay? Two little rivets with little with little plastic black washers. Those are important because if you just put the rivet in by themselves, it's going to be too much on the canvas and it'll rip it. The first and last pole, the first and fourth pole, however, have a more of a sleeve, okay, that the pole slides into. So basically, this is the this is the pole where your your other pole attaches to, you know, on the outside. And these are the things I thought I had to order because it didn't really show it clearly in the nomenclature. All right, so you put your, you know, you've got to drill these out to get the old pole out. you got to have rivets in order to put them in. You could probably go to the store and get a couple of black washers and rivets. It certainly might be a little less hassle than trying to order them. Just kind of take note of the size and the depth and don't forget you've got that little cross piece in there so they can't be too, too deep. All right, so one of these has got a sleeve, or two of these have a sleeve, the other two just get uh, riveted on the bottom. And it's sort, of, it's sort of important that you understand the orientation of all of this, okay, because <coughs> you want these to be flat on this end. So before you go attaching your hinge pin and bolting everything together, make sure that they're going to lie out with the canvas on the right way, not the canvas upside down or twisted or whatever like that. So your last thing that you're going to do, I did anyway, is this is a good reference that the flat, flat, uh, flat side of this connector or this pull, pull attach point, if you want to call it like that, remember our poles is on the bottom. All right, so there's that. Okay, so what have we learned? Uh, I think I think it's important to note that when you do when you do a parts assessment uh, and you order parts, for, I'm, and I'm just going through this particular awning, but there's going to be a lot of you guys out there that's got, that are going to keep this awning and are going to need parts for it. A couple of suggestions: whether you're it's broke or not, I would order at least the spar hinge attach points because those are the weakest link in the entire awning system and it wouldn't hurt to keep a couple of spares. If it were me, I'd have order four and keep four on hand. You can always really, you know, if you have access to a lot of you guys aren't full timers, so maybe you have access to a vise, you can straighten out a pole and, and, you know, and work it that way. But as far as having a parts in the future, who knows? All right, so, I hope this video was informative. Please comment down below if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Check for the links down below, and I'm going to leave links to the illustrated parts breakdown on the internet uh, and also the website for Oz10. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the little bell because otherwise you won't get notified when new videos come up in the future. And so in the meantime, take care and we'll see you in the next video.